Hello, Knights fans. We're back with another edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup here, as always, with Coach Gary Puccio. Coach, last time we were here, you had a nice lead against Siena, and the game ended up slipping away, and then you went out to Cincinnati and battled a really tough Big East team in Xavier. Let's first talk about the Siena performance and what you saw from your team. Yeah, well, you know, it's one of those games that just kind of got away from us that I thought we were playing well, and I thought we hit pretty well, and we just let the game get away with a couple of mistakes late. Um, Jimmy pitched an outstanding job in his first, well, I guess his second start of the year. We had him on a pitch count because he hadn't started so much, and that probably hurt us too because I got him out after like five. But uh, I thought that was a good sign, and we hit the ball pretty well. We just got to learn how to finish a game. Yeah, you got a really good performance there from Sharkey. Uh, just talk about what, what he was bringing. I know he's got a nice fastball, good, some good velocity, but what you saw from him on the, in that outing. Yeah, I brought him in also at Xavier, and it, you know they had the uh, some miles per hour up on the scoreboard, and I know he hit 89 a couple of pitches. So kid's got a good future. He's got a, you know, he's still a little bit raw, and he, he still has to get some experience. And I thought the Siena game was a great chance for him to get experience. I was really impressed. They walked nobody in his six innings of work. That was impressive. Uh, he was on a 75 pitch count and six innings. I mean, that's pretty good to get on, get into the sixth inning with 75 pitches. So he did a good job. He's going to be good. I mean, he's got some growing pains to go through, which always happens with freshmen. But I honestly believe this kid's got a real nice future ahead of him. Yeah, in the early season here, scoring runs really hasn't been much of a problem for you, specifically the sophomore catcher, Evan McDonald. He's hitting almost 340 on the season. What have you seen from him in his development? You know, over the weekend, uh, he had a phenomenal weekend at Xavier. And, uh, you know, he's an Ohio boy, so – Mom, dad, brother, sister, grandparents were all there. So I told him you better get him in a caravan and get him over here to home games so that he can keep doing the same thing. But, but uh, Evans quality man. He's a he's a quality hitter. He's a terrific catch behind the plate. He's a he's a very big plus for us. And you know, even last year, I think one of the things we did well last year was we got him 129 at bats even as a freshman. So, so we you know, we expect him to be a leader as time goes on. Yeah, you talked about the Cincinnati being out in Cincinnati at Xavier. Very tough team, obviously. A big test for this squad. Hopefully those will pay dividends late in the season. One of the other freshmen, a big freshman for you, was Owen Vonislinger, hit his first home run. How was his development going on, and what do you expect to see from him the rest of the season? Yeah, you know, I think Owen's one of the best freshmen his we brought in. And, and you know, I, I, that's hard to say when you consider we got Dolan and, and Jorge and a couple other guys that have shown they're pretty solid too, Seltzer and company. So... It's impressive that Owen's done what he's done. I mean, I, I, I like him a lot as a hitter. And I think he's good aggressive at bats. He's a good RBI guy, and he's going to obviously continue to get better, too. And uh, he hit a big two run homer that gave us a lead. I think that was the only lead we had all weekend at Xavier, but, you know, it was clutch. So I expect good things out of him. Yeah. And then back to Xavier, obviously, it was a tough series. Didn't go as planned, but you were in a lot of these games. You had the bases loaded in the ninth in the game and the 8 to 5 game on Saturday. How much do you think this will help the team long term? Obviously, as you, now you get more focused into conference play, but just in general, getting to see some of these tougher Big East pitchers. Yeah, you know, if you're in it, I mean, again, the the Big East, they're one of the lines that gave the kids they're expected to win. You know, we're not expected to win. We got to play our A game to go out and be. They're ranked like 56 in the country. We're nowhere near that. So, so we got to play at our best level and make limited mistakes, if any. If we're going to come out with a victory, and and you know we played well in most of the games until we made that mistake or two, and once you made that mistake or two, those kind of teams, you know, they're bloodthirsty. They get that opportunity. You open the door for them and forget about it. They're running right through. So, you know, I mean, we I thought we gave them a couple of good games. I thought we were in the, in the games for the most part. I know the scores don't sound that way, but but you know most of that scoring was done late. So hopefully uh, it's a good learning experience. And when you're putting up nine runs against a Big East school. That hopefully that means good things about us in our conference. Yeah, and we I know we've talked earlier and throughout the season and obviously last season in the past about Matt McCann's prowess on the base pass, one of the school's all-time best stolen base guys. But top of the lineup, you know, he's had two hits in the last four straight games. He's leading the team in batting average. How nice is it to him to get to really get the ball rolling for the lineup? Yeah, Matt, he's just he's he's the catalyst. I mean, if he doesn't play well, we're not playing well. When he plays well, we're good. And I mean, one of the things that happened the very first inning at Xavier was uh, two out. Uh, two on and ground ball to Matt. And we threw the ball away, and 
and that led to three unearned runs in the first thing. So we got off to a lousy start immediately, and and that is so out of character for Matt because he's I think he made eight errors the entire season last year as a shortstop for us in fifty something games. So. So, you know, we count on him not just on his offense, but his defense, too. And he's definitely the glue of the team. He's the glue of the infield. And he's definitely the catalyst on offense. The kid, when, when he's going well, we're going well. Now, upcoming here, finally get really into the meat of the NEC schedule. You all have Mount St. Mary's and Sacred Heart and back-to-back -back series. Obviously, like, the season hasn't gone as planned, so to speak, to start the season. But now that you're really getting into the conference slate, how do you? what's your message, I should say, to the team to really get them focusing in and saying, hey, these are the games that we need here against the conference teams, specifically in upcoming Mount St. Mary's? Yeah, I don't know how much longer I can keep using it, but I've been telling them, you know, you're 2-1 and one in the conference. I mean, that's, you know, facts. So so hopefully we can play better in the conference. But at the same time, you got to learn how to win. you got to establish how to win. So, you know, that's a carryover, whether it's a conference game or a non-conference game. So... I mean, that's one of the bad things I thought happened with the Siena game that, you know, that's a game we probably should have put in our back pocket and we weren't able to. Uh, at the same time, we show, I, th I think other than three games the whole year, every game's been three runs or less. So that means you're in the ball game. So it's, it's learn to make that key play or throw that key pitch or get that key hit. That's the difference between it being a W or an L. So, you know, we think we're going to be competitive. One of my lines from the day I took over this program was, I said, my goal was to make our team where they're a competitive playoff team every year. And for the last few years, I think we've delivered that, and I think we're going to deliver that again this year. doesn't mean we'll make the playoffs. doesn't mean it's a guarantee we're going, but, but we're going to be in contention for it, and that's, that's the thing you ask for every year. Yeah. What will also, I think, help that contention, you had the series against Wagner, but now you'll get some continuity. Hopefully the weather will be a little more cooperative. Team get into a flow. You should have four games here with Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to get your pitchers all into a little bit more of a routine. How important is that? Yeah, instead of playing at midnight on uh, Friday and Saturday night in 30 degree weather, yeah, I, I, you know, I definitely think we need to get into that routine where the pitch is thrown every Friday that he knows that's his start, and the Saturday doubleheader guys know that's their start, and same thing for Corey on Sunday. So, yeah, I, I think that's important, and and uh, hopefully, as you said, the weather's going to cooperate, and we'll start doing that this weekend. Great, thanks for your time today, Coach. So the Knights will welcome Mount St. Mary's here to the Namoli Family Baseball Complex. That series will kick off on Friday with a 3 o'clock start, the doubleheader on Saturday beginning at 1, and then they'll finish out the series on Sunday. For all information about the FDU Knights baseball team, head to FDUNites.com.